Hey, what's going on guys? Gendic Commando here and welcome to the channel troops. So today we're going to be reacting to what new Marine Corps recruits go through in boot camp. So we're going across the pond again to see our US brothers and sisters in action and see what boot camp is all about, guys. Because I'll be honest with you, I did work alongside the US Marines, but I do know very little on boot camp and the training, all of that good stuff. So I'm really interested to see what our warrior brothers and sisters go through if you are please like the video please subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications along the way join the discord if you want to recommend any videos to me to react to or just want to chat then uh, that's a great place to do it guys all right and yeah all of our other links for social media are on there including twitch which we stream gameplay to every single night troops but without further ado let's get straight into this one enjoy Okay, so straight off the bat then, um, US Marines haven't worked with them in the past and stuff like that and got a few friends um, who's on the circuit at the moment or who have been in the Marines. Uh, um, they, they've told me it's uh, it's it's quite, it's all about violence in the, in the Marines, the US Marines. It's about, you know, going from zero to 100 as quickly as you possibly can and there's no one who does that better than the US Marines. So I'm looking forward to seeing how... Uh, how this training is. This is Marine Corps Boot Camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. The legendary Paris Island. Before they become United States Marines, all recruits have to graduate from the Marine Corps 13 week basic training program. Which so that's um, so it's 13 weeks, uh, but that's a basic training program then I'm guessing you'd go off and do relevant different specializations and stuff. Um, the US Marines are a massive, massive organization, guys. I don't know what the numbers are exactly, but if you could drop that in the comments to let me know, I'd appreciate that, guys. But I know they're at least 50,000 strong. Is that is that right? Maybe it's more, maybe it's less. I'm not too sure. But um, in comparison to the Royal Marines commandos, our basic training course is now 36 weeks, all right? As of 2020, it is 36 weeks basic, and then you go on to specialist training there after that. So there's a big difference in the times and stuff, but it's a bigger beast at the end of the day. The Royal Marines are quite a small um, outfit, so the resources to be able to pump into them uh, is probably a lot easier log logistically, guys. So um, still get very, 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 very good trained soldiers at the end of that 13 weeks intense training. Test them physically and psychologically. No, I, feel sorry for you. I mean, look straight off the bat, guys. You can see it's very, very intense. It's a pressure cooker for 12 weeks. Under the pressure of an intimidating drone instructor, someone that's putting you under the scrutiny of attention to detail every single day. Yeah. And to a certain degree, everything you do is never going to be good enough. Yeah. Everything at boot camp sucks. It's going to hurt, it's going to be painful, but it's only going to hurt more if you look at it that way. Around, around, around! It's boot camp, and it's supposed to prepare you for the challenges that lie beyond. Yeah, these guys do not mess about, all right? My, um, there was a, 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 two, a 2IC second in command of uh, Delta Company that I was a part of at 40 Commando Royal Marines was a, um, a US Marine, I believe he was a, a recon Marine or a raider, one of the two. Um, and yeah, he was a, a real, real tough guy. Very, very professional. We spent five days at Paris Island where we saw different companies at various stages of training. You will now run, you will walk, get on the yellow footprints right now. You will do what you're told to do, what you're told to do it, and without question, do you understand? Now these guys, drill instructors <clears throat> in the uh, in the U.S. Marines are renowned and quite famous around the world. Okay, these guys do not mess about. They do not mess about at all. I mean, look at him there. You wouldn't want to mess with this guy. All right, been there, done that. He, he's he's wearing the t-shirt right now. Yes, On day one of boot camp. New recruits arrive at the receiving barracks where they take their first steps toward becoming Marines by walking through. Right now, every one of these potential recruits are absolutely shitting themselves. 
all right? Young, don't have much life experience, and you're getting shouted out of a guy who's twice your size. It's going to be intimidating. These silver hatches symbolizing the threshold between the outside world and Paris Island. You walk through these silver hatches once and never again, do you understand? Once, Once and never inside, again. Recruits are processed and assigned to their platoons. Put it up! Yes, ma'am! I know you were told not to come with your hands down! Put it up in a bun! In a bun! 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 I'm bun. out! Bun. I'm out! After graduation, Marines commit to a minimum of four years of service. Four years. Upon entering the Corps, an entry level private will earn around $20,000 a year. Okay, it's, it's not not that much then, guys. All right, uh, when uh, a Royal Marine trains and becomes qualified, you get about the same, but in English pounds. So, yeah, it's not that not that much, guys. All right, but you don't join the military for the money; you join it for all the other perks and benefits and the uh, prestige of becoming um, a Marine as well. Recruits are required to make a phone call to a family member or their recruiter. To let them know they've arrived. This is recruit Hatchet. I've arrived safely at Paris Island. Please do not send any food to both the island. They're only allowed to read the script printed for them inside the phone bank. I will contact you in seven to nine days by letter with my new address. Thank you for your support. Goodbye for now. Yes, sir. Get in the club. Hey, sir. Wow, that's insane. Imagine if that was your parent or something you were ringing. They'd be like, oh man, that must be tough. That must be tough for the parent to hear that as well. We don't do this in the Royal Marines, actually. You know, we, we have our phones. I had my phone and stuff, and it's like, yeah, you're not allowed to use it at certain times, but I could ring my mom and like, hey, mom, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you know, so that's tough, man. Recruits are given three chances to get someone on the line. Sir, my recruit is not answering, sir. Call him again. Not every recruit is able to make a connection. If there is no answer, hang it up and close it. But they won't have long to dwell on it. The Marine Corps Recruit Depot in Paris Island sits on 8,000 acres cool. of the South Carolina Low Country. That looks cool, guys. I just want to have a look at that again. I would love to go there. To the South Carolina Low Country. It's one of two enlisted recruit depots in the United States. The other is in San Diego, where only male recruits are trained. Right. So guys, oh, we've got another one of these stupid adverts. I actually went to, um, I went to San Diego. Yeah, I actually went to San Diego when I was with the U.S. Mar with the U.S. Marines in, um, well, with the Royal Marines alongside the U.S. Marines at Twenty Nine Palms, and uh, San Diego is one of the best places I've ever been on this planet. I love that place. You guys love the British military, all right, and the military in general. We had such a positive, positive um, time there. It was, it was unbelievable, guys. I've got very, very fond memories of visiting there. Around 20,000 recruits graduate from Paris Island every year before joining the more than 180,000 Marines actively serving today. We take young men and women from all walks of life, all cultures. Maybe they were rich, maybe they were poor. They've got different religious backgrounds. They are the melting pot of America. And they come here with one common goal, and that's to be a United States Marine. Paris Island, South Carolina. Here, everyday Americans become Marines, the toughest fighting men in the world. Male recruits <laughs> have been trained at... Yeah, we've all done that before. If you've been in the military, especially the Marines... That rifle, it might not be the heaviest thing, but uh, trust me, they can thrash you to death with it, um, if need be. And it can be something as simple as holding that weapon system out in front of you guys. All right, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. In Paris Island since 1915, female recruits began to train there in 1949. Wow! Never knew that, guys. I thought that was a recent thing. I never knew that female recruits trained there pretty early days as well. That is really, really fascinating. Today, females comprise under 25% of recruits at Paris Island. That is brilliant. 
I'm all for it, guys. If you can pass the test, great. I'm all for it, man. And approximately 8% of the United States Marine Corps, the lowest percentage of any United States military branch. Right. That's still really impressive, though, guys. A recruit's day begins before the sun comes up. Their typical wake-up call is 0400, or 4 a.m. Right, so that's pretty early, guys. It's uh, standard in the Marines, though, yeah. We get up early, we train hard, we go to bed late. You don't have much sleep. Simple as that. Recruits Fireman's carry. an intense series of physical challenges. 4-3. Am I hearing that right? 4-3. Yes, sir. Fail. Some recruits arrive in better shape than others. Jesus. Hang on a minute, I recognise this guy from somewhere. Where do I recognise this guy from? He's a, is he a famous YouTuber? I'm pretty sure I recognise him. Some never did anything more than sit on a couch, you know, as a couch potato. And some may have been collegiate athletes. So there's a vast yeah, spread of what their athletic fitness and ability is. Aye, yeah, it was a... There wasn't a, a, a drastic spread in the Royal Marines. I found the standards to gain entry into the Royal Marines were really, really high amongst the highest in the British military alongside the Parachute Regiment. you got to be as fit as they come, all right? And when you are, when you start commando training, your, your fitness levels are already really, really high. And I found that a lot of the recruits were sportsmen. Like myself, I was a boxer before I joined, so my fitness levels were pretty high already, guys, all right? And um, there's not that too much disparity between um, the best fitness and, and the less fittest. They we're all quite similar levels, all right? And for that reason, you tend to progress through commando training and doing even more harder physical activities. And you, you tend to be all on the same kind of level, if that makes sense. So there's no one really lagging behind too much. If they do, they end up failing pretty early, so... Much of their training happens here, in Leatherneck Square. A series of intimidating obstacles. Leatherneck. So, Royal Marines, our nickname is Bootneck. And that's from the ancient days when we were on ships and we were uh, on the old wooden ships and stuff. And we were acting pretty much as ship security, okay? We used to cut the leather off our boot, put them underneath the tunic at night when we slept because they would come in and try and cut your throat. <laughs> All right, so that's where we got the term Bootneck from. And I'm guessing it's a very similar story for the US Marines. Comprised the confidence course. Leatherneck. Dogs are watching you freaking fail. You failed this event. <laughs> no, just grab your canteens and go. You failed this event. Man, this looks like one more try, sir. What did I just say? Aye, sir. What did I just say? Aye, sir. Go. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Training program is progressive in nature. Starts out in a crawl, walk, run approach throughout training. 99.9% .9 of those that get here can complete all those requirements at the end of training, regardless of how they started. Yeah. Slippy, please, please help! I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> so he's got a fear of heights. I can emphasize with this: when I was in the Marines. Um, I wasn't too good with heights. I did everything that I needed to do, but uh, you know, I did it with a stern face. But inside, I was kicking it. All right. Not a lot of people will admit that, guys. All right, when they're in the military, it's oh, I'm not scared of anything. But you know, there's guys who are scared of heights here. Um, he apparently, he, he clearly doesn't like heights. Oh, I'm not, please. Any recruit with a fear of heights gets the chance to conquer that fear, courtesy of this 47-foot-tall tower. That's pretty cool. must repel down using two different methods. For me, the rappel tower was hard because I sort of had a fear of heights. Grab along my right hand with your right hand. You have to trust the rope. So there's nothing to be worried about. You'll be safe all the time. Can you please help me? I'm trying to help you. Not I don't want to go down. Recruits with a phobia of heights have little choice but to face their fear. Oh, man. Just in time, another advert. Hang on, guys, we'll get through this. I'm seeing these random adverts just popping up. Here we go. Right, so that's it. He's going down anyway. The most dreaded parts of training is the gas chamber. Gas chamber. I remember it was week... Oh, what week was it now? Oh, it was like week 10 or something like that. I think you go down and do the gas chamber stuff, and it's, um, it's manageable, guys. Some people don't get affected by the gas, all right? 
but um, some people get do get affected. I, I actually was affected by the gas, but it was it wasn't too bad. If I'm honest with you, it's nowhere near as bad as people make it out to be. Um, it's not a nice experience, but it's not horrendous, if that makes sense. Where recruits are exposed. <laughs> what was that about? He's going off. I love, I love how the uh, the drill instructors go crazy, man. It's uh, it's it's awesome. CS gas, more commonly known as tear gas. Once the recruits enter the chamber, they break the seals of their gas masks. Yeah. You go in, you feel it instantly hit your skin. You just feel burning. Ah! Say something to me now! Feels like those few minutes felt like an hour. Yeah, here we go. After around five minutes, the recruits are free. But the pain endures. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not nice, guys, but it's, it's funny to watch back because you think, I've been through that, um, I've done that, so it's, it's good to watch. Definitely, you thank God for fresh air. It's really nice <laughs> yeah. to be able to breathe in and not feel an instant burning sensation. <laughs> Gas chamber is important because it builds confidence. Confidence in the gear, confidence in the drone shutters, and then confidence in themselves. Yeah, that's true. It does build confidence in the equipment that you're using and in the staff as well when they're saying you're going to be safe. If you take this off, you're going to feel burning. It, it does put a level of trust amongst you and the staff, 100%. Now, so yeah. Recruits are trained in... I've seen this bit before. I've watched a video on this. It looks pretty cool, guys. Like off the old Gladiator um, series in Britain, all right, that we used to watch. I believe like you have to hit each other and knock, knock someone off the board or something. Looks pretty good, and again, it feeds into that, um, you know, that zero to 100 and violence that the U.S. Marines um, uh, are proud of having, all right? It's uh, different styles of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, yeah. It's to teach aggression, guys. At the end of the day, war is an aggressive environment, and uh, that's what it's all about. The aggressor will always win. Trust, you understand? Yes, sir. Bust, me, sir. Aye, sir. A key aspect of their martial arts training is fighting with pugil sticks. You killed that opponent, you ah! So we had gunnery sergeants come to the commando training center, Royal Marines, to teach us certain, um, certain, what's the word? Close quarter combat, close quarter battle scenarios. All right, we got we have a full syllabus on it through commando training where we get taught hand to hand combat. All right, and it was it was actually done by U.S. Marines, and uh, it was fascinating to learn off those guys. I've got a lot of respect for them. The pugil stick techniques are intended to mirror those used in combat while using a bayonet. Here in the Marine Corps, we have a kind of a little ditty that means red is dead. Yeah. yeah. So that red side is supposed to emulate the actual knife portion of the actual bayonet mounted on the weapon. So anything that you Boom. strike with that red tip, nine times out of 10 are either gonna be incapacitated or laid to rest. Go on, son. Honestly, it gives them an opportunity to blow off a little steam. <laughs> that looks real cool. I would have loved to have given that a go, guys. And definitely, yeah, you're going to get some pent-up aggression out of the system. They have a lot of pent-up aggression, especially towards maybe their drill instructors. They're out there, they're actually doing what they feel like they signed up to do, which is learn how to combat the enemy. Yeah, yeah, true. Recruits also practice with actual bayonets. Very, very important part of training. And engage in other types of hand to hand combat. It's all catered towards making a normal person a fighting machine, having that placid outlook and then turn it into a violent kind of persona. It's 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 all about not a hundred guys. It's uh yeah, silence to violence. That's what it's about. Although male and female recruits do intersect during training, platoons are separated by gender. And although the Recruit Depot has experimented with integration before, the Marine Corps is the only military branch that separates male and female recruits during basic training. Okay. Ready, one. According to the Corps, 
every Marine is first and foremost a rifleman. And that's exactly the same in the Royal Marines as well. You are a, a Royal Marines commando first, a rifleman first, and then you specialize off into other sectors of the, uh, other parts of the military. And uh, But you'll always be able to rely on your core skills, and that's why training is so vigorous and in, um, in, in, in practicing all of those things, okay? Recruits spend the bulk of two weeks devoted to marksmanship. Yeah, when we worked with the U.S. Marines, they were known for being very, very good shoot uh, shot. I think it's got a lot to do with the United States in general, getting a lot more exposure to weapon systems and the training, in fact, is, is really, really good. All right, The, the Royal Marines have, have fantastic marksmen, don't get me wrong, but I just found that the US Marines were um, really, really good with, with weapons and, and they spent a lot of time on the ranges and stuff, a lot more time than what we did, it seems. First of which sees few shots actually fired. First off is the fundamentals. They have to understand how to aim. They have to understand exactly how to breathe when they're taking that shot. They have to understand exactly how to squeeze the trigger and how to have follow through and recovery with a rifle. Combat operations is the foundation for every single Marine, regardless of what your occupation is. What it is to sit behind a rifle, look down that barrel, and be able to put lead on target. is defined as an amphibious warfare force. Therefore, swimming plays a key role in training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another recruit up there, and there's more than five still going away. They're making me lose my life. During swim week, recruits go through numerous exercises in the pool while <laughs> wearing their camouflage uniform. Right, and another the advert there as well. To get out of the corporate rat race Hit these adverts, man. Yeah. Boom. Forms. But training it. Yeah, so, is, um, yeah, we do a lot of swimming in the Royal Marines as well, troops, okay? Um, probably a little bit more than these guys do, um, if I'm honest with you. Swim swim was an integral part of our training, and we had to eventually pass something called a BST, a battle swim test that's done with weapon, uh, your combat rig, your rifle, and clothes, all right? So it's uh, pretty hard, guys. Paris Island isn't all physical. Recruits also spend long hours in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But what may seem like downtime <laughs> can end at any moment. Yeah. When a drill instructor decides to order an impromptu cardio session at Paris Island, it's what's known as getting slayed. So it's a very similar thing to uh, in the Marines. We, uh, we call it a beastin'. And yeah, these things happen all the time. It's normally the drill instructors who initiate it, actually, because they're the ones who are responsible for turning you into a private, into a civilian, into a Marine at the end. Okay, guys, they're with you every single day. And um, yeah, I've been there, done this, guys, as well. And it's uh, it's not nice at the time, but after you've done it, it's definitely character building. I can definitely relate to it. It does help you um, improve as a soldier and as a person, believe it or not. And it's free PT. All right, that's the thing that you've got to remember. You're getting fit at the same time. It's an experience. You realize the thing you've done to get in a sand pit, and then you realize, okay, that hurt, so let's not do that again. Physically, it hurts, but... So, yeah, if you can hear the barking outside, that's my uh, dog, so apologize for that. But, um, yeah, I think she likes this video as well, troops. But, yeah, these, these thrashings and stuff, I remember... I remember well they were um they, they came all the time actually you know to be fair every single day we got thrashed for something even if it was nothing we got thrashed but uh <laughs> yeah if you want to join the marines guys you got to be prepared to be thrashed like that me personally i never worried about the pain i was feeling in my body it was more thinking about the mistake i made and how i need to correct it the next time so man he's going crazy and he? he's lost his voice as well there's going to be some chaos because when they come here, we can want to tear them down a little bit. And then we want to bring them back up in, in the mold of what it is to be a United States Marine. Recruit training culminates in an event known as the Crucible. Mm -hmm. Over the course of 54 hours, with minimal sleep and food, recruits must endure realistic combat scenarios. 
the sounds of gunfire and shelling are played over loudspeakers mounted in the training area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recruits are forced to work together to overcome obstacles and achieve objectives that require problem solving and strategy. This is what we saw on the second day. <laughs> the recruits had become exhausted and irritable. Catchers ready! Ready! Jump it! Get up away! Oh, Just jump! Jump! You're not even jumpy! I sir! You're just, you're just falling down! I sir! Starting to grind them down now a bit to see what you're really made of. You can't really test and, and judge a person until they've been ground down. All right, guys, and then you'll see what type of character they are. Um, in the Royal Marines, uh, the, those characters, you know, who got tired, who didn't perform as well when they were tired or anything, they didn't make it to the end, okay? So the ones that got to the end, um, they proved that they could be tired, worn out physically, and mentally fatigued and still perform to the standards required, guys. And that's what this is doing right now. You know, you go through a really rough time. You start thinking, man, like, it's hot, I'm thirsty, my arms haven't felt this bad in my whole life. Yeah. We're halfway there, come on. You just keep looking at the person to the left and right, and you're like, well, he's doing it, I gotta keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, true. I'm not gonna let him do it on his own. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So there's no reason not to push. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta just keep on going, man. Crucible is complete. These recruits officially become Marines. People yeah. on Instagram are making huge so money um, from their posts. It is a tough it thing, guys. I don't know why these adverts keep people. popping up. I can't see them on the actual screen. It's one of them. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all done for a reason. Before graduation, friends and family see their new Marines for the first time in more than three months. That's nice. That is nice. There'll be very different people as a result of this, guys, as well. Families that come down for graduation day that haven't seen their son or daughter in yep. about three months. It nice uniform, you know, not only a physical but an intangible difference. When they walk across that parade deck on train day 70 and they graduate, they're no longer recruits, they're Marines. Nice. Meanwhile, in the barracks of Lima Company. I'm talking to you. I sir. Are you real good here? I sir. All that trash out. I sir. Brand new recruits diligently square away their racks before being warmly welcomed by their senior drill instructor. Sit up straight and look at me. Our mission is to train each one of you to become a United States Marine. Discipline and spirit are the hallmarks of a Marine. We will give every effort to train you, even after some of you have given up on yourself. Starting now, you will treat me and all other Marines with the highest respect. Physical or verbal abuse by any Marine or recruit will not be tolerated. My drill sergeant and I will be with you every day. Everywhere you go, you must give 100% of yourself at all times. Above all levels, never quit or give up. We offer you the challenge of recruit training and the opportunity to earn the title. United States Marine. Yes! That's quite inspirational, that. That is quite inspirational. It's not just about shouting at them. They're giving a bit of a motivation, aren't they, you know? I think we're done there, guys. That was really, really good. So I'm going to start doing a lot more um, US Marine stuff as well, guys, okay? Because I thought, you know what? I was a Royal Marines commando. I know a lot about my Marines, all right? But I would like to know more about our brothers and sisters over in the States. So... Yeah, expect a lot more content, guys, on the United States. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
drop a subscribe and notifications hit that button as well so you get notified every time we go live and yeah i appreciate you all guys for being here if you want to see us play games live every night we've got twitch now link is in the description too troops so we'll see you there but other than that have a fantastic day peace Thank <laughs> you.